since Ralf has introduced the topic so beautifully on the subject of dangerous aquatic animals, I thought, well, no, I've decided I have sufficiently recovered from my bad day yesterday in order to share the story with you, because I think you might find it quite entertaining. And if you don't, well, lions are not up to too, too, too much. Gives you a chance to think of your questions on lions. So, here's what happened. I'll start at the very beginning. First thing in the morning, I said to Adrian, we need to try and take the most sensible route. We can't take the main road because we won't have any signal, therefore we can't be in the safari. Oh look, there's elephants behind this lion. And so off we went, slipping and sliding all over the place, which has become our standard expression to describe the driving that we do. And we had to take a certain route because we couldn't take any other route. And I thought it would be the best route for the best possible crossing, because I knew there was a rocky crossing there. Anyway, long story short, there was the crossing, hello Abies, in the forest. Long story short, there was the crossing. I could see fresh tire tracks from where somebody else had driven their vehicle that morning and got through it. And it was it was not a stream, let's not let's not exaggerate. It was a river. It was a proper flowing river. But I've driven through far, far worse. So the trick of course is to is to keep up enough speed that there's a wave so that the water doesn't actually affect the car. Which was what I thought we'd done, and we entered it with a fair amount of speed, knowing that it was concrete. Not too deep, and the next thing the car just cut out in the middle of it, obviously because it had now got water in its engine. So I stopped the car and I switched it off. Well, I didn't have a choice, it was off, and I now know that you can't. Well, I, I knew then that you couldn't turn the car on or try and start it because it only makes the problem worse. And so there we were, stranded. I'm frantically thinking about how to call someone because we could not have been further from anywhere if we'd possibly tried. Fortunately, at that point, Adrian had the wherewithal to point out that my feet were underwater because the water was flowing up against the doors that had started to come into the vehicle. I should, at this point, while the lion is, is doing a really good job of cleaning itself, I should, at this point, point out that we have a fair amount of broadcast equipment in the back of our vehicle, along with five 12 volt batteries that sit on the floor. And my feet were underwater, and the water was rising along with a whole host of el other electronic equipment, and not a soul in sight. Eventually a car comes along, I'm trying to make every phone call under the sun, no one's answering because that's how these things work, and the water is getting higher and higher, and I'm trying to, to think of a plan to get us out of here. And eventually a car comes along, and they wave at us, and they find a way across, and they wave at us some more, and he says, no, you've got to, you've got to come to us and we'll, we'll take you to the lodge and you, you can negotiate a rescue team. So I look at the water and I think, well, and I just want to insert my own disclaimer here, please don't ever do this. And he says to me, just roll up, your, roll up your trousers, you'll be fine. So I slide off the front of the bonnet, to basically to hip deep in the water, muddy water, and pick my way across the rocks. Trying desperately, it must have been the most absurd image, because I was trying desperately to walk on water while not walking on water, and not falling on my face, with my phone in my pockets and my jacket rolled up under my armpits. Why Adrian did not video this, we will never know. But I think at that point it had dawned on poor stoic Adrian that he was to be left behind, in the car, in the river. Because I had to make sure one of us was there to move the equipment if we needed to. So I waved goodbye to, to Adrian, who had stoically resigned himself to his fate, shouted to him that he must just stay still if anything comes past, and off we went. I then make my soggy way into a very fancy lodge, into Ashnell's, with my covered in water and mud right up to my hips, and I squelch my way through their guest area to the manager's office to say hello and please can you help me. And uh, they then say, no problem, why don't you come and have a cup of tea, you can relax, don't you worry, we'll get everything sorted out. And in the back of my mind I'm thinking, but I've left Adrian on the car, because I didn't want him to wade through the crock water. Now Adrian's messaging me saying it's raining, so I'm picturing rising waters. I'm imagining that we're going to come back to find poor Adrian standing on the roof. Eventually, after I've had my cup of, very nervous cup of tea, in, in, in the damp, trying to phone every person I can possibly think of. We get a rescue team together, we go and pull the car out. The mechanic takes one look at it and says, no, 
nothing I can do. So Shadrach cops in the car with Manu and they drove approximately three hours to get to us and fix the vehicle and then we all drove three hours back to camp. And thus concludes the tale of the time that Jamie nearly wound up in the Talek River with Adrian and Quito the vehicle. We didn't, but it was to say it was an interesting experience. Was <laughs> Quito has been drying out ever since, and it appears no harm done. I mean, once once Shadrach got her to splutter back into life, she just expelled half of the river onto the dust behind us. Now there you go, big thanks to Ashnals for rescuing us and, and allowing us to stay at their lodge and for allowing me to walk mud through their guest area. My sincerest apologies for that. And that is the tale of that. Let us move from the tale of woe. I know, I know, but Adrian took it very stoically. Adrian, apparently lots of the viewers are, are des feel desperately sorry for you that I abandoned you. I'm so sorry. I didn't see it. Didn't see an option there. And I'm thinking of. I'm looking at poor Adrian as we're driving away, thinking, this guy has been with us for how many weeks now? Three weeks? About three weeks? Four weeks? What a what an introduction to life. <laughs> I just didn't want both of us to wade through the crock water. It didn't make sense. Poor poor Adrian. So that was our tale of woe. Uh, fortunately a tale with a happy ending. I went to bed yesterday as soon as I get home and did not emerge until this morning. Okay, now that I've finished telling you the tale of the time I got stuck, let us hope that Rolf is staying unstuck wherever he happens to be.